Guten Tag, Guten Abend. I did my presentation on the life of Johann Gutenberg, uh, who did the printing press. Did this for the class History of Libraries, which I have written in German. Uh, but he probably printed in uh, Latin, because that was the written language at the time. Gutenberg was born between 1394 and 1444, but his exact birth date's not known. Um, much of his life remains a mystery, it's unknown. It mostly has to do with speculation, but there aren't any records on his, um, his life, so it kind of makes it difficult. His father was a mentor, printed coins, and uh, was, was a patrician from Mainz. His mother came from a family of merchants, grew up in Mainz, Germany. Education is unknown, probably went to Erfurt University and studied Latin. He went to Strasbourg around when he was about 30 years old in 1434. Moved to Strasbourg probably because of better job opportunities and the economic and government problems in Mainz. He inherited money from his mom, who died in 1433. Then he went into a business venture to mass-produce holy mirrors. The holy mirrors were for the pilgrims of Achaeon. Achaeon had some holy relics, and it was believed that if you had the holy mirrors and the light shone on to you with the holy relics, um, that you would get some holy powers from it. So he wanted to mass produce that. Uh, Gutenberg was an entrepreneur as well as an inventor. About 1438, he started another project that was secretive. It is possible that he invented the printing press or part of, parts of it in Strasbourg. The holy pilgrimage of Achaeon was canceled because of the plague. So his business venture and holy mirrors was not very profitable because it got canceled. <laughs> uh, so back in Mainz, he eventually went back to Mainz uh, because of possible fear of war by invaders, because a hundred years war was ending. He um, began the printing press with, in Mainz with his creditor Faust. He borrowed 800 guilders twice from Faust for his ambitious project of the printing press. The first book that he printed was Donatus, a book on Latin grammar. Then he printed the Sibylline Prophecies, a Greek and Roman poem. And after these, he printed his most famous work, the Bible. So a little bit about the printing press. Uh, the hand mold, which is like where you get how you make the type letters, uh, was revolutionary. This was a standard piece of equipment for about 500 years. It's where you carve out a letter with a punch, pour in a mold, and then the letter, and then you get a letter, which is the product. But uh, it's kind of a complicated process, and I would refer to more diagrams or, um, you know, other resources like YouTube or whatever. Um, but the, uh, I guess what made it hard was all the letters had to be the, the same height, too, for the press. And Gutenberg also had to adapt paper and ink for the press. He had to make the right paper, and paper came from China, or the invention of paper came from China. Uh, the paper used for quills and scribal inks were too hard for the printing press. Gutenberg had to find the right amount of softness and hardness uh, to make the, the imprint on the paper. Uh, the ink had to be ad adapted. He had to know how to use linseed oil, soot, and amber as basic ingredients had to figure out how to make printer's ink. Oil for varnish had to be the right consistency, and the suit had to be degreased by careful roasting. The press, it's not self-evident that he had to make the press, but the press had been used in making paper to squeeze them dry. Uh, the idea of the press came from pre-Roman presses for wine and oil making. He needed the press he needed the press to apply equal pressure on the entire page, which was kind of, of a, another difficult task with printing, as you had to make it so it printed evenly. And here's the, the final product of the printing press. 
the different pieces. So you put your your type uh, your types, your letter pieces uh, in the type form area, and then to the right, right hand corner, it shows people um, working the printing press. Uh, someone has these little ball things in their hands. Um, that's where you put ink on them, and then you put that over the type letters. And then the other person, he's putting paper on there, and you fold that over, and then put that under the press and you should get an imprint but I'd, I'd refer to YouTube uh, if you wanted to um, get more information on it because they, I don't know, there's some pretty good YouTube videos out there on um, the printing press and how it's done and some of the techniques are still used today and it's kind of interesting too so the Bible, his most famous work uh, each page contains about 500 words. Uh, the design is dictated by scri scribal traditions because uh, it's mostly handwritten, so like the margins and everything. That's He kind of had that designed after that, and he had the had illustrated with illuminated manuscripts. Um, he didn't want it to be too radical because printing was such a revolutionary at the time. Um, so the Bible is known as the 40, this Bible, his Gutenberg Bibles are known as a 42 line Bible, but it's not like that all the way through. Um, but most of it's 42 lines. He had 180 copies made, 1,282 pages made with a staff of 20, casted, casted 290 different shapes, that's the little letters um, and other shapes, assumed 150 printed on paper, 30 printed on parchment, between 1452 and 1455 printed 180 copies of the Bible. 49 copies of the Gutenberg Bible remain in existence today. It is one of the most beautifully printed books because uh, he had to compete with the handwriting of the time. He didn't want it too radical. Um, today, the, if there's a Gutenberg Bible for, uh, for sale, it's estimated that it'd be about $100 million dollars. Individual leaf of the Bible, uh, two sided, would estimate to be about $100,000. So Gutenberg faced a lawsuit um, because he took out money and his creditor won his money back. And this was about the time that he was trying to get done, that he was getting done with the Bibles. But, and it's speculated that he may have gotten his money back too if, they, if he had let him sell all of his Bibles but he wanted his money back then. So he won the case against Gutenberg and left Gutenberg in debt pretty much the rest of his life. And he took over the shop of Gutenberg and possibly other Bibles he printed. He continued the shop with one of Gutenberg's printers, Peter Schaffer. And Peter Schaffer actually knew Faust fairly well, better than Gutenberg. And they printed the mains uh, Psalter and 1459 and a few other works. Gutenberg died in February 1468 in Mainz. Before he died, he was made courtier by Prince Bishop Adolf von Nassau. He was able to spend the last years of his life in relative comfort because of this recognition. Um, he printed some minor works prior to his death, um, possibly worked with other printing shops and trained other printers. Gutenberg Beyond. Uh, he's known as one of the most, uh, the printing press is known as one of the most important inventions. He's often to referred to as the man of the millennium, according to the Gutenberg Museum website. History.com lists Gutenberg's printing press as number one of 11 innovations that changed history. And to the right, the Gutenberg Museum, as it is today in Mainz, Germany. And I got most of my information also from a book uh, I got from the library called Gutenberg, How One Man Remade the World uh, with Words. And thank you for watching. And Alvita saying.